The United Nations has a new symbol of peace and security. Recently, they tweeted, a guardian for international peace and security sits on the visitor's plaza outside the UN headquarters. It's a statue of a beast that has an uncanny similarity to the beast described in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel. Before we look at this ugly beast, let's talk about Bible prophecy for a moment. There are a few Bible scholars that would deny that we're living in the closing hours of time, just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. We've seen an escalation of the signs of the times, especially men's hearts, failing them for fear of that which is coming upon the earth. One of the reasons this is happening is because we're experiencing a plague of biblical proportions. Dangerous and lethal strains of the coronavirus are spreading across the globe. A new coronavirus variant of extreme concern. They fear it could be more infectious than Delta and more resistant to vaccines. 19 crisis and alarming evidence the situation may deteriorate even further in the new year. Another sign that the Bible speaks of just before the second coming is that this godless world will speak of peace and safety. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. This year's International Day of Peace comes at a crisis point for humanity. As a human family, we face a stark choice, peace or perpetual peril. We must choose peace. Peace is at the heart of all our work at the United Nations. The United Nations is continually talking about peace and safety, and as we've seen, they've even adopted this beast, one that they say is a guardian for peace and safety. We're also told that this strange-looking statue was inspired by the Aztecs. They were a bloodthirsty culture of human sacrifice, one that filled their religious temples with trophies of human skulls. Archaeologists say thousands of human sacrifices had their still-beating hearts cut out before their heads were severed and added to a monument the size of a basketball court. The Aztecs had nothing to do with peace and security and everything to do with brutality and conquest. Let's now look at the book of Daniel written 2,500 years ago as it, with great detail, talks of this beast that will be manifest in the last days. And four great beasts came up from the sea each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. The same beast was described in the 2,000-year-old book of Revelation. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. So let's look closely at this multicolored United Nations symbol of peace. It looks like a leopard, its feet look like the feet of a bear, its mouth is like the mouth of a lion, and it has eagle's wings. Is this just some weird coincidence, or is it just another sign of the end of the age just before the coming of Christ? When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, Please obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent and trust in him for forgiveness of sins. If you watch this video to the end, it will tell you how to do that. If you're a Christian, you know that the time is short. So redeem the time, make time to pray, and reach out to this lost and dying world. And feel free to do so by sharing this video with those that you love. Now watch this. Because if Jesus died for our sins, but we still have to repent for these sins, to a father that would never send any one of his children to an everlasting inferno. I mean, what loving father would ever would? If God's all loving, why would he do that? Uh, you think there's an afterlife? I know there's an afterlife. I've died many times. I've been resuscitated more times than you have fingers and toes. We don't actually die. We start right back at the same spot we are now until we reach that, uh, I guess, Valhalla or uh, anything you want to call it. It's it's an, it will be a never-ending cycle until we perfect our own lives and ourselves. Believe in God's existence? Absolutely. I believe I am my own God as everyone else is. You're your own God? Of course. God's not perfect. Um, and God's not perfect? Absolutely not. Even in the Bible, he admits to there being other gods. He's a vengeful, jealous, and just God. When is it even God admits to there being other gods? You're talking about the Ten Commandments where... It begins with, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. That is you know why he says that? 
because man makes God in his own image. Hindus have 350 million gods. We have our own perception, our own conception of God. We make up a God that's congenial to our sins. And I did it before I was a Christian. It's called idolatry, and it's a transgression of the first of the Ten Commandments. The Bible says the God you have to face on Judgment Day is perfect. He's morally perfect. Are you doing anything that could be morally offensive to God? Are you a good person, or are you like the rest of us? I'm righteous. You're righteous? I, I do what's right, not just for myself, but for others. You know, and it's basically keeping the moral compass pointed where, it's, where it needs to. So how many lies have you told in your life? That's the ninth commandment. It's about as many grains of sand as there is here. So what do you call someone who tells lies? I call him a liar. So what are you? I'm a liar. And do you still think you're righteous? Absolutely. Have you ever stolen something? Absolutely. What do you call someone who steals? No, I'm a thief. So what are you? I'm a thief. No, you're not. You're a lying thief. Yeah. Do you still think you're a righteous person? Yes, I do. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Of course. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Absolutely. You would? You've just broken the fifth commandment, which says honor your father and mother. But most people would never do that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't substitute their mother's name for SH to express disgust. And yet that's what you've done with God's name, and it's holy. Godly Jews won't even speak his name because it's so holy. Well, think about this. If um, <clears throat> Jesus died for our sins, right? What God would send any one of his children to an everlasting anything? other than paradise or, you know, whatever it may be. And if Jesus died for our sins, why would anyone go to hell? That's a really good question. Let's get back to it after we've looked at one more commandment. The last commandment we looked at was blasphemy, punishable by death in the Old Testament when you use God's name as a cuss word or fail to give it due honor. Now in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Absolutely. You had sex before marriage? Absolutely. So Robert, I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself. You've told me that you're righteous, but at the same time, you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, self-righteous, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by those commandments, the Ten Commandments, and I forgot the Fifth Commandment, which you've broken, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Innocent. Robert, you'll be, you'll be guilty like the rest of us. The Bible says there's not a righteous man on the face of the earth. And the only way I could think myself to be righteous is if I had my own moral standard, which would be very low if I think a lying, thieving, fornicating, blasphemous, adulterer at heart who's dishonored his parents and broken the first commandment by having another God before him. If I thought I was righteous, I'd be deluded. You wouldn't be innocent on Judgment Day. You'd be guilty. So if you're guilty, would you go to heaven or hell? Neither. Well, the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no fornicator, no idolater will inherit God's kingdom. So, Robert, you're up the river Niagara without a paddle. What can you do to justify yourself? So let me share the gospel with you and see what you think. The Ten Commandments that which you looked at are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. When Jesus was on the cross, he paid the fine. That's why he said, it is finished just before he died. It is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. Robert, if you're in court and someone pays your speeding fines, the judge can let you go. He can say, this is serious. A lot of fines here, but someone's paid them. You're out of here. And he can do that which is legal and right and just. Well, God can legally dismiss your case. He can let you walk out of the courtroom. He can take the death sentence off you and save you from hell, all because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood when he suffered for our sins. The Bible says Christ has one suffer for sins, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And Robert, if you'll just repent of your sins, stop saying I'm righteous, I'm innocent, admit your sins. If you repent of those sins, turn from them and trust in Jesus, not your own goodness, but in Jesus. You've got a promise from the God who cannot lie. He'll remit your sins in an instant and grant you everlasting life. Give it to you as a free gift, not because you're good, but because God is good and rich in mercy and kind to all those that call upon him. Do you trust yourself to lift your own legs and walk? Yeah, sort of. Do you believe in yourself? No. Why? Well, the Bible says, he who trusts in his, in his own heart is a fool. We're very fallible. You know, we make mistakes. Uh, the person who put the eraser on the end of the pencil knew what he was doing because we're prone to error. If you don't trust in your heart and listen to your heart, how will you ever find love? I found love. I've been married for over 50 years. So I, 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 uh, I follow my emotions, but I don't trust in my senses, especially not my eternal salvation. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You don't want to mess up your eternity, man. You can mess up things in this life. 
you know, they're fixable, but if you die in your sins, it's not fixable. It's everlasting. It's damnation, and I don't want that to happen to you because I care about you. I think to repent for anything that I've already, you know, forgiven myself for would involve, uh, I guess, a paradox with the Bible because if Jesus died for our sins, but we still have to repent for these sins to a father that would never send any one of his children to an everlasting inferno, I mean, what well, loving father would ever would? If God's all loving, why would he do that? And then to have to, re to ask for forgiveness for something that's already been forgiven on something that is, seems like an, an infallibility, it just seems like a paradox. That's a good question, um, but it's actually a straw man. Do you know what a straw man is? What is that? It's something you create you can easily tear down. By saying God is all loving, it's a straw man. The Bible doesn't say God is all loving anywhere in Scripture. It says God is love, but he's not all loving. That's like a criminal looking at a judge and saying the judge is all loving, therefore I'm just going to walk. No, if, if a judge is good, he's just and good. He'll make sure that justice is done. And the Bible says God is love, but he's also righteous and holy, and you have to face him on judgment day. And he gave you a conscience so you know right from wrong. Robert, listen to your conscience. Acknowledge your sins. You've got a multitude of sins. You're just like the rest of us. I'm not pointing my finger at you. I'm just as sinful as you. I need a savior more than I need the air that I breathe, and so do you, if you want to keep that precious life of yours. You've, you've had a hard life. You're in recovery, and things are better, and you're enjoying life. Well, you don't want to lose it. Man, you don't want to lose it. But Jesus said, he that seeks to save his life will lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake shall save it. So lose yourself in Christ, repent and trust in Jesus. Do you have a Bible at home? No, I do not. Can I give you a book that I've written? I, I would um, respectfully decline. Can I show it to you? Respectfully decline. I'm going to show it to you anyway. All right, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So you're going to take it? I will accept it. Okay. Really appreciate that. Great to talk to you, Robert. Thank you. The Evidence Study Bible will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about subjects such as the theory of evolution, as well as valuable information about the cults and different religions, atheism, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com. Approaching a stranger is a little bit scary for most of us. That's why we've produced the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular gospel tracks. This is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. These really are funny, and the gospel is hidden way inside. It's so easy to give out. You simply say, this is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. It'll cheer up your day. This is the good person test. It's exactly what I say to people in comic form. And who can resist a comic? This is the Ten Commandments coin with a gospel on the back. I tossed a handful to teenagers once on a sidewalk and watched them fight over them. It's a great gift to give to anyone. And of course, our ever popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? And watch people's faces light up. There's a total of 350 tracks in the starter kit. Get yours today at livingwaters.com.